Ever since it started in the 1860s, the Union Pacific Railroad has since become an iconic and world-famous American company. They are still a major Class 1 railroad, running freight trains all throughout the USA. Thanks to the efforts of Dovetail Games, plus third-party developers Smokebox and Digital Train Model, the railroad is very well represented in Train Simulator, and today I thought I'd make a tribute video to the UP, complete with a huge collection of some of their motive power. Of course, this video was filmed entirely on the famous Sherman Hill route. Here we have most of my UP collection round the turntable in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Some of these locomotives are the 412-2 No. 9000, an EMD DD35A, and the SD40-2 in that special United Way livery. Next up, I'll show you 10 of these locomotives in more detail, complete with clips of them running. But first, I'd like to give a special mention to Challenger 3977. This huge 4664 tender engine was built in 1943 and is now on display in North Plate, Nebraska. By far, the oldest engine in today's lineup is 440 number 119. This iconic locomotive was built in 1868 by the Rogers Locomotive and Machine Works of Patterson, New Jersey, and she got her big break after appearing at the Golden Spike Ceremony in Promontory Summit, Utah, back in 1869, when a Golden Spike was driven to complete the Transcontinental Railroad. Central Pacific number 60, Jupiter, was also present at the event. Sadly, the original 119 was scrapped in 1903, but a full-size working replica was built in 1979 and now runs at the Golden Spike National Historical Park in Utah.
Perhaps the most famous Union Pacific steam locomotives were the mighty 4884 Big Boys. 25 of them were built between 1941 and 1944 by the American Locomotive Company. They were used to haul incredibly long and heavy freight trains throughout the UP system until their retirement in the early 1960s. I should add that for this video I was using the original RSC Big Boy as I don't have the smokebox version. Eight Big Boys are preserved, including 4014. This locomotive was famously reacquired by Union Pacific themselves in 2014 and restored to working order over the next five years. She is now the largest working steam locomotive in the world, having returned to service in 2019. The next engine we'll take a look at is this curious beast, the third generation gas turbine electric locomotive. Thirty of these things were built by General Electric between 1958 and 1961. At the time, they were the most powerful locomotives in the world, with the main turbine being able to generate an impressive 8,500 horsepower. Amongst other things, these locomotives were notable for being made up of three units. The lead, or A unit, featured the driver's cab and a small diesel engine, with the latter being used only for moving the locomotive around the yards. The B unit housed the main turbine itself, as well as the main generators to power the traction motors. The third unit was simply a tender, converted from an old steam locomotive tender. This thing carried Bunker C oil, which was used to power the turbine. Throughout their lives, the gas turbines had a series of major mechanical issues, and this, combined with the price of Bunker C fuel shooting through the roof, resulted in ha them having a relatively short working life, with Union Pacific having retired all of their units by 1969. Sadly, the prototype and none of the first or second generation turbines were preserved, but third generation numbers 18 and 26 did survive into preservation.
Now we come to the EMD GP30 of 1961. An impressive 948 of these things were built, with 111 going to Union Pacific. The GP30s are easily recognisable thanks to the distinctive hump on the roof, although in my opinion this makes them look quite ugly. There was also the cabless GP30B, a booster unit of which only 40 examples were built. Even more interestingly, the GP30Bs were built exclusively for the UP. While none of the GP30Bs were preserved, in real life the GP30 number 844, which you can see here, is preserved at the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Boulder City. She is not to be confused with the FEF-3 steam locomotive of the same number. Now we come to three massive diesels from the 1960s, namely the General Electric U50 and the EMD DD35-DD35A. The U50s were twin-engined locomotives built between 1963 and 1965. 26 of them were built, with three going to the Southern Pacific and the other 23 to Union Pacific. They rode on four two-axle bogies, which were linked in pairs by span bolsters. Interestingly, the bogies were reused from scrapped gas turbine locomotives. These things were effectively two GE U25Bs on the same frame, with each prime mover only powering the two bogies at their respective ends. Total power output of the U50 was 5,000 horsepower, and they were built in response to UP's requirement for a 15,000 horsepower three-unit locomotive to replace the turbines. Sadly, they didn't last long in service, due to a series of major mechanical issues, a similar fate to the smaller U50C variant. The last U50 was withdrawn from Union Pacific's roster in 1977, with none of them surviving into preservation. The EMD DD35s and DD35As fared a little better. It was actually the cabless B units that came first, with 30 of them being built in 1963 and 1964. 27 of them went to Union Pacific, with 3 going to the Southern Pacific. The DD35 was effectively two GP35s on the same frame, with each prime mover powering its own 4-axle bogey. Like on the U50, total power output of the DD35 was 5,000 horsepower. In 1965, 15 more DD35s were built for Union Pacific except these ones had cabs and were designated as DD-35A. Despite being reasonably successful, neither the DD-35 nor DD-35A were particularly long-lasting. The cabless engines were all retired by 1977, while their cab-equipped counterparts survived as late as 1981. None of them survived into preservation.
Easily one of the most famous diesels on the Union Pacific was this, the EMD DDA 40X. 47 of these colossal locomotives were built between 1969 and 1971, and they earned the nickname Centennials, presumably because they were built exactly 100 years after the Golden Spike Ceremony. At a staggering 98 feet or 30 meters long, they were one of the longest single unit locomotives ever built. The first DDA-40X was retired in 1984, with the whole class having been retired by 1986. Twelve of them are still around today, with 6936 being part of Union Pacific's heritage fleet. The EMD SD40-2 is a locomotive that really needs no introduction, but for the purposes of this video I'll still give a basic rundown of their history. These things first appeared in 1972, and they have since become some of the most successful and best-selling diesel locomotives in EMD's history, with a staggering 4,175 of them having been built between 1972 and 1989. The Union Pacific Railroad originally had 686 SD40-2s, with numbers 3200 to 3410 having the so-called snoot nose. I'm not sure on the current state of UP SD40-2s as a whole, but I do know that 3105 is preserved and on display at the Rail Giants Train Museum in California. Incidentally, she's actually on the same spot that used to be occupied by Big Boy 4014.
this is the EMD GP50, the last EMD product we'll be looking at today. If my research is correct, Union Pacific only had second-hand examples of this locomotive, and never ordered any straight from EMD themselves. While there was a GP50 numbered as 5525 in real life, I'm unable to find out that much information on this thing's history. What I do know is that 278 examples of this type were built between 1980 and 1985. In the case of UP 5525, she was originally built for the Missouri Pacific as their number 3525. Lastly, we have the General Electric ES44AC, the most modern locomotive in today's lineup. The ES44AC is part of GE's Evolution series or GEVO locomotives, and first appeared in the early 2000s. Since then, the design has gone on to become one of the most common diesel locomotives in the United States, with several major railroads having at least one of them in their fleet. In UP's case, they have well over 400 GEVOs on their roster. On a personal note, given how common and widespread the GEVOs are, they remind me of KiwiRail's DL class, in the sense that you can find them just about anywhere on the system. Thank you very much for watching, and I really do hope you enjoyed this tribute to the Union Pacific Railroad. Feel free to let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future.